I'm going to do a little mini sound test. So on the left, this is the 2018. On the right. Yeah, the 2019's keyboards. Yeah, they're a lot louder. More initial impressions. I'm going to do some proper tests in a minute. But let's uh, see some Synbench 1300 and 118 FPS. And Geekbench, everyone's favorite. I got on the multi-core, check that out. 28,000, that's I'm at pro level speeds. What the f just happened? <laughs> Apple just delivered my MacBook Pro 2019. Eight cores, baby. I got eight cores in my system. I know, I look dodgy. But, what up? We have right here exactly the most beautiful designed MacBook Pro there has ever existed in reality. And inside you get just a power cord manual. Let's see what's inside here. Oh, I can't get it open. Let's see what we got inside this beautiful cover. I'm just gonna copy all of my stuff so I make it a fair test when I compare it with the six score. And uh, I'll be showing you the results very soon. Enjoy your life. I'm just setting it up, transferring all my files via the SanDisk SSD. We're gonna be blitzing the performance of it so far. And on the right here is the six core i7 2018 edition of MacBook Pro. So far, first impressions. Come here, come here. There is a bit of fan noise already. It's a brand spanking new system and all I'm doing is copying files from SSD and the fans are lightly whirring. It's not as loud as I remember 2018 going. 2018 was just obnoxiously loud. These guys are on. I'll of course do some more performance tests but I've got about another hour and a half for all of my gigs to transfer over. The keyboard does feel different. So there is slight changes officially. They are both considered third gen generation keyboards. The only difference is what I've heard is that this one has a new material, but everyone with a 2018 MacBook Pro is eligible to upgrade their keyboard to the new material. And I'll be doing that because my end key is bust. Shout out to Talio for finding out why the end key is bust. Let's get these babies, these puppies side by side. Let's see, can you tell which one is which? Can you tell which one is which? Oh, you can. There's a big clue on the screen. If you can't tell, you know, you're a bit... It just feels like these are slightly more wobbly, the 2018 edition, whereas this one feels it has more structure. But let's take a listen. Let's, let's type some words. I'm gonna do a little mini sound test. So on the left, this is the 2018. On the right. Yeah, the 2019's keyboards, yeah, they're a lot louder. I don't care about noise as long as they effing work. <laughs> as long as they don't break down every five minutes. All right, for all you guys at home setting your computers up for the first time, this is those fans. My computer's going a bit mental, but this is as to be expected because right now you can see that my top task is sharing D. I'm currently just airdropping some files over to the computer. And I've also got MDS stores and MDS workers they are all running and that's just indexing all of the files on my new computer for spotlight search, you know, command space. And you get to see that search bar over there. But yeah, check out our fans, 5,950. The thing about these MacBook Pros, you only get 10% more fan noise if you use the Vega upgrades. I have got the 560X, so that's limited to 5,500 on the right and 5,900 on the left. Whereas the Vega editions go 6,000 on both, so you get a bit 10% more fan noise there. More initial impressions, I'm gonna do some proper tests in a minute, but let's uh, see some Synbench 1300 and 118 FPS. And Geekbench, everyone's favorite. I got on the multi-core, check that out. 28,000, that's I'm at pro level speeds. Now, there is a bit of difference between these two machines. This guy has six cores, this guy has eight cores. This guy has 32 gigabytes RAM, this guy has 16 gigabytes RAM. Now the reason for these differences is 
I wanted to see what will affect performance more, more RAM or that super awesome CPU. So we're going to find out together in this performance review. I've pretty much cloned these machines side by side. I've made sure that MDS and all the processes aren't running. So my computer is kind of like timid over here on the left. There was a spike before, but that's finished. And this guy's computer, he's running home free and everything is happy. So the only benchmarking application I'm going to be running on the side is Intel Power Gadget and Max Fan Control. So I can let you guys know how the fans are and the performance of the CPU. And to get as much bang for buck, what I'm going to be doing right now is I'm going to be unplugging the power on both units. So we're going to see also how battery life is affected with all these tests. And on the third run, the i9 8 core one is coming in faster and it's finished and it's got again 1350. Whereas the i7 2.2, you can see the fans are really ramped up. They've gone to 5,900, so this is a noisier beast straight up. And this guy has come in at 921. So now I'm just gonna play back this footage at 2x speed, see if there's any slowdowns, especially when the titles come in. They both feel about the same. There was definitely slowdowns with Nils titles. So export times are faster, about 20% faster on the eight core i9 versus last year's six core i7. That one compiled first. This one was a couple of seconds later. And this guy's now 24, this guy's 28. So you are getting improved frames per second. So we're just gonna hit both processors as hard as possible and we'll see what the fans do, we'll see what the processor does, we'll see how much power is getting drawn out. So now we've got Final Cut Pro running in the background, Synbench getting hit in the foreground, Unreal Engine running over here and over there, and our CPU. This guy's using 10 watts, so he must have finished his Synbench. Let's hit it again. So over here, let's see what is happening. We've got this guy using 45 watts of power. This guy using over 50, 53 watts of power. Three gigahertz is hitting. This guy's hitting only 2.6. Temperature is 96. On this one, temperature is 94. You can, you can definitely see that the i9 with eight cores is getting about 300 points on its Cinebench run pretty much every single time. In other areas, it was faster, the i9 eight core. All right, so that was a bit of a performance run through, just a, a basic one. In the next one, I'll be checking out how it performs with eGPUs, I'll be checking out how it performs in bootcamp and all this kind of monstrosities when you plug it into an external monitor, if that affects anything. I remember last year when I was plugging it into an external display, having a 560X definitely got hotter than having a 555X. And interesting notes as well, the fans on these two machines only got up to 5,950. And the right side fans only go up to 5,500, whereas the Vega CPU, the Vega computers that I tested out last year, those guys went up to 6,000. So it looks like if you have the Vega GPU option, you get more fans noise, whereas if you just have the basic 555X or the 560X, you don't get increased fan speeds, or maybe they fix something with the new 2019 editions. Battery life, we're finishing up the show. We got 78 over here. This is a tried and tested battery, and we got 82 over there. It's a brand spanking new battery. Full charge capacity is 7,400. Full charge capacity is 7,000. So this battery is slightly dated. It's already lost 400 milliamps. Current charge, this guy is 5,800, whereas this current charge is 5,200. So it looks like we have dropped 7,000 minus 5,200. We've dropped 1,800 over here and 7,400 minus 7,800. We've lost 1,600 over here. So it looks like the i9 9th gen CPUs, 2.3 gigahertz at the very least, it's pretty good for battery life. Of course, this guy has double the DDR4 memory, so maybe this sucks up a little bit more battery. But you can see from the tests, having the extra 32 gigabytes RAM didn't exactly make this one faster than this one, so you're getting more bang for buck if you bump up that CPU. But for now, let's just see how it sounds. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Nora's clinic. I 
second, I could say that these computers are pretty much neck and neck. They're exactly the same. If you've got an 8th gen, I wouldn't upgrade to the 9th gen. But if you've got a 7th gen, if you've got um, a 2017 MacBook Pro and you missed out on the 2018s, maybe these 2019s are compelling. Word to the warning, Navi should be out in a couple of months' time. So maybe they might drop a new edition of the MacBook Pro 2018 with new improved graphics like they did last year. So just remember that if you are getting this computer, just be aware, Apple will now start updating their uh, Macs randomly. <laughs> so don't be upset if there is a newer one in a couple of months of time. And don't be upset if there isn't a new one for the next year. We honestly don't know what the situation is. But what I do know is so far with these tests, this one seems like a very solid unit. I can say, it's got the beautiful sound from this one. It's got beautiful design. The keyboard apparently has improved. It's a bit louder, but I'm hoping it's more solid. And everything else seems to be about the same. You've still got four Thunderbolt 3 ports. You've got amazing speakers. And you've got Mac OS, you know, an amazing operating system there. So I do recommend these 2019 editions of the MacBook Pro. And I'm going to have to think about if I'm going to upgrade. I probably won't because I now have plugged my MacBook Pro into an eGPU and I'm getting a lot more performance with a Vega 64 you know, desktop graphics card plugged in, so it makes things a lot faster for me. But of course, if I had an older MacBook Pro, I'd definitely consider getting one of the 2019s. Hope you enjoyed this performance deep dive into the world of MacBook Pro 2019. If you have any questions or tests you'd like me to check out before I do even more crazy stuff, let me know in the comment section below. Are you gonna get the 2019 MacBook Pro? Guys, I just sent off my A7 III for repair this morning. Then Apple knocked on my door and they gave me the MacBook Pro 2018. So I'm left with a smartphone to do the review. And I knew you guys wouldn't be happy with that. I read all your comments last time. Shitty production. So, what is this? I spent thousands of dollars over here for an A6400. It's my B cam. This is the camera I'm going to be using for this review. I've got this just for you guys to be happy and to see what is actually on the screen. Because last time you guys were saying it was too pixelated. So I hope you really appreciate the review. Sub up. Give me a like. Support me on Patreon. That's right. I'm for sale. Didn't you see my last video? I didn't even have a shirt. <laughs>